boil things to down to is that you know where Jesus said to or Peter says to Jesus you are the 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 the, the Christ the son of the living God and Jesus says on this rock I will build my church and, and we just concluded that you know when in life everything that we do the moment we remove Jesus it just becomes religion it becomes anything else except what God intended it to do and the moment I take Jesus out of the equation the moment I don't acknowledge him don't see him don't look out for him don't um, passionately pursue him then life becomes about other stuff and it's the same in, in, in what they have shared this morning <clears throat> is that that there's a there's a drawing and there's a calling by God just to to that place of intimacy now this is a long weekend this is the select few this morning that's in church and the rest are probably still sleeping and and we will still love them but I'm so glad that you are here this morning and um, as I was preparing this week and as I was pondering even after Wednesday small group just thinking about you know uh, what what God is in store for us one of the things that I realized is in a lot of the conversations uh, not just with people in church but people that are outside the church that uh, you know when I sit with Christians the one thing I hear continually is that you know how tough it is it was a tough week you know things are tough at the moment and 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 this there's, there's a lot of that 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 undertone that are in people's lives and I think that what 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 uh, Johannes and, and Stephen shared just calls us back again it calls us out of that gives us a different perspective of even what God wants to do when things are tough and I must say I've been I've been battling with this you know how can how can saints how can children of God people who worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords the God who's almighty all-powerful who's omniscient omnipresent and all that he is you know look like they are depressed how, how do you correlate the two and I've been battling in my you know, as I've been, been journeying with the Lord but but how is this possible and I guess it depends on where we are looking what, what we are looking at which determines how we feel now I think we can say we've been through the toughest probably about two months it's been in a long time not just you know we've we've had car issues and we've had yeah the list is long and 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 you have these things that come against you and man they, they want to steal your joy they, 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 they are, and what I hate about it is that they are so darn persistent you know, it's not when, when I go, you know, and, and, and I, we, we, with the car now breaks and I go, in Jesus' name, Lord, you know, <laughs> fix it. <laughs> you know what's wrong with this thing. I just need supernatural power, just sort out my vehicle. And then, and then, you, and then you spend a couple of thousand later, you know, just to, to drive with your car again. You know, it's, it's annoying. It's annoying. And, and, and there was a moment where I, I almost because of everything that was going on I, I was sleeping badly man I wasn't sleeping so lucky because I, I think the devil is in there too and then yeah four or five o'clock in the morning he comes and he shakes me awake and then I have these thoughts you know, and I'm trying to think and reason and how, how do we fix this and what do we do and, and then eventually when I wake up enough I go like oh shut up and I try and start praying through these things and I warfare and I feel, but, it, but it's a journey, right? Yeah. Only happens to pastors, we know that. All right, so, so, so I'm all good there. But I was battling with this. How do we have a people who serve such an incredible God? Who seem to walk in a way that shows no revelation of who He is in their lives. And, it, and, and obviously for me, that challenged me to go, but what is going on in your life? I'm, I'm not saying that because of what you are going through, you need to deny it. It's not what I'm saying. 
We go through stuff. We go through hectic stuff sometimes. So it's, so it's very real. So it's not a matter of denying what I'm going through. But it's in that moment, I guess, how I respond that makes the difference. Matthew 14. I want to read the story in the Bible in Matthew. And, and you've read it many times. You know it quite well. But I'll, I'll, I'll take you through what I believe God just showed me and then give you a few handles or a, a four points essentially on, on how to go through a storm. How, how to make it to the other side. Who wants to make it on the other side of a storm? No? Not the light at the end of the tunnel, please. Okay, we're not talking about that uh, deliverance. We, we want you to stay this side of heaven, but you want you to go through the storm. If you see the light, please speak to me. Okay. And after he had dismissed the crowds, this is Jesus, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. So if you need an example about prayer and spending time with God, that is a good sentence right there just for you. When evening came, he was there alone. Okay, so good point again for prayer. Maybe you should pray alone sometimes. And not just be with the people that surround you. Just set out that time and pray to, G to, to your father. Okay, when evening came, he was there alone. But the boat by this time was a long way from the land. Beaten by the way. So what happened? There was a storm. I must just tell you. I, I don't mind storms. When I'm here. You know? I like this. I couldn't even do the Nisna Lagoon in the ferry in a nice day. So I don't know how people get into a boat and then do the ocean thing. See land, see no land. The era help me. It's not doing this. So so I'm sorry, when I read this, my mind immediately goes, these guys are nuts. But, but I guess that was the only way to get to the other side. You had to get into the boat. And maybe if I lived then, I would have been a lot better on the water. But I'm not. So the waves are, waves are beating this boat. And the wind was against and was 25. And in the fourth watch, that's between 4 and 6 in the morning. So now the sun was setting. They got on the boat. Now, Jesus went, goes up to the mountain. These guys get on the boat. So they are on the boat the whole night. And the waves are beating, the wind's against them, it's, I mean, it's stormy, I mean, I'm assuming they've got buckets, they're chucking stuff overboard. That, this is not a nice situation to be in. Between 4 and 6 in the morning, when most of you are like zombies, these guys are on a boat trying to survive to get to the... In actual fact, they probably didn't even know where they were, because there was clouds, they couldn't navigate, they were just in this boat, and they're going like, we're probably going to die. So, storm, right? Hectic stuff, right? Life at them, in their context here is crazy. Death is imminent. Okay? And in the fourth watch of the night, he came to them walking on the sea. Now, oh, come on. That must have been a sight. Huh? Can you imagine Jesus just like, Fishy, sharky, how's it? I mean, he's, he's, he's walking on the storm. Okay, it's, it's probably a bit like this because it's a storm, right? Yeah. So, he, but he's walking on just, you know, just So imagine that. you in this boat fighting for your life. And suddenly you see this, this guy walking. This, there's a guy. John, bro, have you seen it? There's a guy. And it says, but the disciples saw him on the sea. They were terrified. And said, it is a ghost. And they cried out with fear. Imagine, in that moment, their whole situation escalates. They are about to die. The sea wants to kill them. And now they see a ghost. Can you imagine what happens in here? I mean, they are freaked out. They are losing it. I mean, instead of the bucket, they're probably in the back going, what is going to happen? And I love this. How Jesus responds 
in the storm. He says, but immediately. I want you to see that. But immediately. So Jesus wasn't going like, oh, I just want to you know, test your faith a bit longer. I want you to suffer a bit more so, because I want to teach you endurance. When they saw Jesus, immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, Take heart, it is I. Now, disbelief? Yes, is this Jesus? If I understand scripture, they would have known his voice. So they would have knew it was him. And in that moment, what disappeared? The storm. The storm was still raging. But when he said, it is I, they knew him. The God, Jesus who did incredible miracles. They knew him. And in that moment, I can tell you, I think everything changed. The expectation of death probably stopped right there. Why? Because Jesus was there. And they knew it. They saw him. And he says, do not be afraid. Maybe for you this morning, wherever you are, whatever you are facing, you need to hear that Jesus is saying to you, it is I. Do not be afraid. Stop freaking out. Tone it down a couple of notches. Relax. Now, does a friend of ours always say, but calm down to a panic. <laughs> no? <laughs> it's not what I'm saying. He's saying, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered to him, Lord, if it is you, <laughs> command me to come out to you on the water. This man should think sometimes. <laughs> I mean, this is ready, fire, aim kind of stuff. I mean, there's, there's, there was no spreadsheet on this one. You know, no pros and cons. No nothing that he was drawing up to think so, if I get over this boat, what's going to happen then? He's just like, it's Jesus. Command me to come out on the water. That sounds like an awesome idea. <laughs> Most of us here would have gone, is there something wrong with you? What are you thinking, Peter? That's water, champ. There's sharks in there. And, and who knows what else those days. If you read the Bible, it was some. And he says to him, Jesus doesn't go like, You're not ready. You're not ready. The next boat trip we can talk. You can do this. What does Jesus do? He says, Come. And there's an invitation by our Father to come. Where does this invitation come? Around the table. In safe, solid ground. No. It comes in the middle of a storm. Where he says, get out of the boat and come. Most of us here, when we're in the middle of the storm, we're just trying to kill the storm. You're just trying to deal with the thing. Go away and you're rebuking the storm. And I get him at honestly, but, 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 but you don't hear the invitation. He says, come. So what does Peter do? Think, so is it Jesus? No, he says, so Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. Now I can imagine the rest of the disciples in the boat is like, I should have done that. <laughs> Look at that! He's walking on the water! <laughs> pick me, Lord, pick me! I'm next! I'm next! But he walks on the water and he goes to Jesus. But, but, when he, saw, when he did what? Took his eyes off Jesus. But when he saw the wind, and other uh, uh, translations say the waves, he was afraid. And being, beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. And I love this. How even he stepped out in faith. He's the only one that did it. And now he sinks. Jesus still saves him. 
doesn't go like, yeah, you took your eye off me, buddy. So disappointed in you, Peter. I said, come, why were you not looking at me, dude? Why, why did you look at the waves? No, he says, I'll just save you. I'll bring you up. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying to him, Oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? And when I'm in my storm, I guess these are the words I really don't want to hear. I don't want to hear view of little faith. Why did you doubt? If I think of it, then I want to be in that space where wow, I'm full of faith. And when they had got into the boat, the wind ceased. Look at that. Jesus gets into the boat and it's done. Quiet. And those in the boat, boat worshipped him saying, truly, you are the Son of God. Have you ever thought of it that your storm might bring praise and worship to Jesus in the way that you go through it? The fact that you are possibly even just risking it by faith and walking before the Lord. How this will lead others to worship Him. And I think we must never underestimate that. That the way that I engage a storm as a saint, as a child of God, doesn't just build my own faith, but it impacts those that are around me. Sometimes just your family members, sometimes your colleagues, it doesn't matter who, but it has an impact. So we understand we all face storms, right, in life, but it's not the size of the storm that matters. I don't want you to hear this this morning. It's not the size of your storm that matters. It's how you respond in that storm that matters. It's how you position yourself that matters. Now if we look at the story, who was trapped in the storm? All of them. All the disciples who were on this boat, they were all trapped in the storm. But who grew in his faith? Peter. As a result of his faith, it affected the rest. I wonder if there was ever a, a similar situation who of the rest of them would have said, I'm getting out of the boat. Because sometimes when we overcome, when I overcome, when, when I walk through someone and there's people that surround me and they see how I, I, I actually go through this, it inspires them to do the same. See, Peter, Peter just th th didn't just look at the storm. He looked at Jesus in the storm. He saw, when he knew it was Jesus, he looked at Jesus in that storm. So I guess my question to you is, in whatever you are facing, where is Jesus? Do you even see him? Do you see what he's busy with? Do you see the preparation and the work that is busy working in your life right now in the middle of whatever you are facing James 1 James 1 you know when you, we're going to go through trials blow up the balloons invite your friends have a party because you're going through the trial because when that boy is done with you you will be complete and lacking nothing it's going to build some stuff into your life so I want to encourage you this morning take your eyes off the storm and firmly fix it on Jesus. Deal with the fears that are on your own heart. You know, there's a little scripture. can't remember the reference now. It says, take every thought captive and bring it under the obedience of Christ. I am convinced for years now, it's the one scripture we do the least with. Because Google has the answer. Instead of wrestling it out with the Lord, I go, seven ways to overcome a storm. <laughs> nah? I think
think we need to stop seeing what's not there. Sometimes our storm wants to make Jesus look like a ghost. But stop seeing what's not there. Sting, see who is there in the middle of your storm. And please hear him say to you, come. Do you think he was caught of God with where you are at? No. He knows all things. Before it happened even, he knows it. He's not caught of God. And then he says to you, come. I'm on this journey with you. Come. Our faith is honed in storms. Ooh, near Quibus, you can't say that. But our faith is shaped in mold when we face stuff. It's shaped in other places too. Can I just say that? But man, there's something that happens when you're going through stuff and you are wrestling with the Lord and you are pressing in and you're calling the saints into this thing and you have people praying with you and wrestling with you and so on and your, your faith gets honed right there. It becomes beautiful. It grows in that storm. If you go through a storm in the right way, you will look different coming out the other way. But it's only when you keep looking at Jesus. It's only when you hear his voice. So I guess my question to you, what preparation is Jesus doing in your life right now? Do you even see it? Do you acknowledge it? So I want to give you four, four points quickly on how you can can grow through a storm. Sorry, this morning is not going to be a sermon about uh, avoiding the storm. <laughs> I see the storm, handbrake turn to the left, I'm going this way, you know, but we're going through the storm. First one, go through hearing the word. Romans 10, 17, oh, yo, come on. Awesome scripture. So faith comes by what? Googling regularly. Listening to lots of sermons. Faith comes by hearing. And how does that come? Through the? Can I just say, with a lot of love. But there's no amount of sermons or podcasts or anything that's going to do as much for you as just simply sitting with the word of God, with the Bible. And getting into it yourself. Getting your own revelation. Not some preacher like me, somewhere on a TV screen or whatever. There's good stuff out there. But here's my problem with that. We listen to it, we seldom do it. We become fat. It's just <whistles> downloading. And I don't sit wrestling with it often. I want to encourage you, take the Bible, take a, take, start it at a book, just say God, which book, if nothing else, and start reading a book. You know, and that little numbers and, and, and references and stuff, follow those things in your Bible. This doesn't mean your app. Get a Bible. And then you follow those things and you do your own study and you have a, a notepad here next to you that you, you follow what Jesus is saying to you. And the revelation you are being revealed with. And then you highlight that stuff. And you memorize, memorize that scripture. You, you get it in here. So hear the word of God. When you hear God's word, it changes you. It affects your worldview. He alters the way that you think. And if you want to see things the way God sees them, you, need, you want to think the way He thinks. And He's revealed so much to us in His Word. Second one. Tough one. <coughs> Go through believing the Word. It's one thing to hear the Word. It's another thing to believe the Word. You see, let's say uh, was a chasm. There's, there's a, if I believe there's a bridge, Indiana Jones, yeah. 
Have you ever seen what's what's in his death? Last Crusade. We grew up with Indiana Jones. We watched it five billion times because Jamal loved it. But in any case, he gets to, to this place. He has to get the cup or something there. And he gets in. There's this, there's this big chasm here. And he's trying to figure out this thing. And it looks like there's no bridge. Have you seen the movie? And then he throws the sand. And the sand comes afterwards. Oh, he, he takes that step of faith. And then he... There's a bridge. And that's faith. Because God already has made a way. He's already walking on the water. He already knows what he wants to do. All you have to do is get out of the boat. So it's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to believe it. For many years you might have heard that Jesus is Lord, that he's, he's the one that will save you. But it changed the day that you believed it. Even in the church that I grew up in, I, I knew about Jesus. But everything changed in my life the day that I believed that he saved me. Romans 9, 10, 9 says, Because if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You have to activate your faith here. You have to believe. For with a heart one believes and is justified. And then with a mouth one confesses and is saved. So if you haven't said for some time that he is Lord, that he is raised from the dead, and that you are saved, maybe you should remind yourself just about that fact. The third one is grow through taking the word of God. Now what I mean by that, you've heard God's word, you've made the decision to believe it, but now you have to make a decision to take it. To take hold of it. To grab onto it. To hold onto that truth and to never let it go. So, so how do you do it? You take God's word and you put it before you. And I've got a few things there that I've said. I think. Yeah. He said, <laughs> every day speak that truth. Highlight those verses. Put them out on a mirror in front of you. Tape it somewhere. Take them, put them on your home screen, on your phone. Speak them every day. One of the most important things you want the word to do is go from here to here. If it stays here, you can, be, you can reason. You can quote scripture to me. And I know people that can quote scripture, chapter and verse like I cannot do. And then Jesus still say, you will know them by their fruit. And it's when it goes from here to your heart, when it becomes you, that the fruit changes. That everything changes. And then the last one, the fourth one is, grow through acting on God's word. Mm. James 2, 17 to 18. So also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. If your faith does not have the getting out of the boat, it's dead. Something I think we need to just consider here quickly. If my faith does not lead to works, I guess if I look at the scripture, can I then say I have faith? If there's no change in action, if I'm not taking that step, am I not, not then just actually just standing? I could say a lot of nice stuff, but the moment I go, until that moment, I don't require faith. 
because I'm standing right where I am. Unmovable rock. <laughs> but what, what helps me to make this, stay, the, the, this, this step? Is God's word. Is hearing it, meditating, taking it, putting it in here, oh, wrestling with it. Verse 18. But some will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works. And I will show you my faith by my works. How does this change who we are as children of God? So, Quibus, how does this change the way that I live? How do, the way that I face a storm, the way that when the waves are crashing in and the water's in the boat and, and it's crazy, how do, how do I act here now? By faith. It's one thing to read the word, it's one thing to take hold of it, of something, and it's another to act through your belief in it. You can hear stuff, you can read about it, but until you act upon it, that's the most difficult part. Jesus could, uh, uh, Peter could have stood in that boat and gone like, Jesus, if it's you, tell me to come. And Jesus would have gone, come. And he could have gone, Nope, not doing this. Have you seen the waves? I just saw a shock. Not doing this. And then he goes like, but come. I've got you. Nope. No faith required. Get out of the boat. Act upon his word. You need to allow it to grow in you. To take root in you, to take you to into the places where God really wants to lead you. Lead you. James three, uh, James one verse three. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. So, if I look at the scripture, I guess then it's a good idea for us to desire the testing of our faith. Nobody wants to raise their hands today. Ah! And this is James 1, by the way. This is when you face trials and you're going through that stuff. The testing of your faith produces steadfast. That's why I said your faith grows in a storm. Your faith grows as you wrestle with these things before the Lord. How I respond in that storm makes a difference. But I guess it does matter what I'm looking at, what I'm staring at. You can go and read the Bible. And there's a lot of stories of people who risk it, who got out of the boat in various ways and saw an incredible, almighty, all-powerful God do incredible stuff in their lives. Can I ask the band to come up and then we're going to worship the Lord. You see, we're going to face all kinds of situations. And I almost want to say that I believe God wants to do a miracle in your life in every one of it. Why? He's just who He is. We see a storm. He sees an opportunity for growth and to teach you something. Come on, parents. Our kids go through stuff. I, I, I still hear my voice wife's voice in my head often Kubis, what's the teachable moment what are we teaching Jamie and Caleb right now and every time something happens when they go through stuff I'm looking for what, what's the teachable moment I don't want them to miss the teachable moment and I don't want us to miss the teachable moments of God in our lives so how do we go through a storm not getting depressed is we change what we're looking at. We want to hear the word. We want to believe the word. We want to take the word. And we want to act on the word. So keep stepping forward. Keep getting out of that boat. Don't be an unmo unmovable rock in your boat. Not going anywhere. 
The world needs us. The world needs your radical faith. Can you guys start ministering maybe, please? The world needs your radical faith. The world needs to see how you go through a storm. The world needs to see what is happening in your life and the, the, the reality of a God who can do anything. You know, we, we're so quick to testify when God, you know, provides uh, finances for something or anything else. You know, the, the, the big stuff. But what about the stuff, the daily stuff, where He is just walking with you through your life? Where He just shows you who He is every day. Where He says, I love you. Let's stand.